We'll get more into design principles in the future, but the most important one is going to be color. When I'm designing a space, I almost always approach it the same way, and that is nailing down and figuring out my color palette. Why, you may ask? It is because color is one of the first things that our brain processes when it looks at a space. Our brain is actively and constantly making connections. There's a reason we like crosswords and hangman is because we like to make connections. So when we look at a space, our brain is immediately making connections between color and shape. Color can also be used to keep our brain and our eyes active and moving in a space. So dispersing that color at different points in the room is also important. Once I nail down that color palette, I start dispersing it in the space and then making connections within the color palette itself. So I'm not only going to choose pieces that are blocks of the color palette, but I'm also going to combine those colors in certain pieces. My favorite thing to do this with is rugs, art, and pillows. You can pull a whole color palette together and therefore room with one of those items. So I often don't choose choose those three items until my color palette's decided and my room is almost complete. Because I need those things to make connections within the color palette and therefore bring the room together. You might say, great, okay, I'm ready to start with a color palette. Now what should that color palette be? A lot of times people don't realize that they already have one. I take everything into consideration that's already in the room that the client would like to keep and that is going to be part of my color palette. For example, the flooring, the wall color, their sofa, their end table, Anything in the room is going to be a color. The only colors that I give a pass to are black and white because they are void of color and can pretty much fit into any color palette. However, I do include black and white in my color palette if they are going to be the main colors of the room and not accents. Accents meaning trim or hardware and main colors meaning walls or furniture. How many colors you choose to have in your color palette is going to be up to you, but I personally like to stick with around five. If you go over that, it starts to become a little overwhelming if we are going to intentionally sprinkle all of these colors around the room. might be asking how much color I should use of my palette in my space. There is no rules for this because there's no rules in design, but I do like to break it down into percentages. If I have five colors and I need to use 100% of each of those five colors, I'm going to use 30%, let's say, on one item, 30% on another item. Therefore, I may only need smaller items to complete out my 100% of that color. Here's an example of a room that I just redesigned that has green walls and a green sofa. That's a lot of green for a room, so I'm not going to choose other large items like a rug for more green in the space. I've already maxed out my percentage of green that I really wanted to use. Therefore, plants and pillows will be just enough to complete that 100%. I find this method seems to click a little bit more with mathematical minds. Now, I do have the power to decide that 100% wherever that is going to land in the space. Take my own kitchen behind me, for example. Yellow is a very bright color that I don't want a ton of in my space because I don't want to seem overwhelmed. Therefore, these bar stools are about 90% of the yellow in my kitchen. So it's personal preference of how much that 100% is in the space. My goal is to evenly distribute the 100%, not make it all clumped into one area. That's what's going to keep your eye moving and make connections in the space. So the leftover 10% of my yellow can be sprinkled throughout the space, which I've done with hardware and art. Gold is also yellow, if you're wondering. I just posted a TikTok redesign where I had a black, white, gold, and green color palette. Even though it's a simple color palette with a simple design, it is pleasing and cohesive to look at because we have evenly dispersed those colors through the space. My quotas for these colors were different where black was not used heavily in the space, but it was intentionally sprinkled through the room. So my 100% of black was maybe five and 10% at a time throughout the room. I also chose to have the color green dispersed throughout this room in the foreground, middle, and background. The floor color was used on the pillows, the nightstands, and the frames on the wall and we're able to make that connection of white from one side of the room to the other. My eye is looking at this room and my brain is making lots of connections with color. Color can also be used to create rhythm like it's doing with the curtains on the back wall. And it's also used as contrast like the rug and the dresser are doing against the floor. And the white bed is contrasting and coming forward off that green back wall. And the picture frames above the bed are creating contrast and rhythm. I hope this makes you realize that color is so important to cohesive spaces, no matter the design style. It's why very eclectic spaces or curated spaces can look very cohesive is because they share a color palette and they don't focus so much on style. 
found designing spaces with this color approach is much easier for people to understand and execute in their own homes. It's a simple concept, but very effective when teaching people to be their own designer and be able to curate a space themselves. To recap, we are going to come up with a color palette and then disperse that color palette intentionally through the space, which allows our eye to travel the space and make connections, and hopefully ending up with a room that looks designed and intentional. Make sure to subscribe and follow for much more design content.